Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. You guessed it, Duff Dog and I are back on the 1966 Ford Bronco. So if you haven't seen the last video, put a new water pump on it, radiator hoses, belts, chin went through the carbonator, we bent up a hard fuel line, we got a brake pedal switch in, headlights working, park lights, tail lights, and then we got stalled out on the steering column. Well, last night had a few sandwiches, and a Tiffany, she came over, and she said, you got something screwed up in that steering column, and I said, I know. I said, but I measured everything. She said, did you measure it right? Critical dimensions, kids. In engineering terms, that's that's when you screw something up because, you know, I thought the tube length overall needed to be 30 and a half. No, the overall tube length don't matter. It's from this hole right here where the shifter goes into, if I can find the shifter. If it was a snake, I'd be dead. There it is, right there. Where that ball goes into, to this, we're just calling it key stock, to there. So from that center line to that center line, is our critical dimension not the overall length of this tube which is what i was going by so you can see what i've been doing here i've been cutting and sliding uh i'll, I'll admit i screwed up the first time i slid it together and i was all worried about getting those lines lined up so i slid that apart behind the camera before the first video don't worry i screw up too so let's see if we can show you here here's the original tube i kind of had to put it together and figure out what my bandsaw blade width was you can see where that hole is at it's at the very top of this tube, and this one's down a ways. So that's where we screwed up. We were off by just about a half inch. That much right there. So we're gonna tack it together, your tech tip of the day, other than critical dimensions. Just tack it together, see if it all fits, then pull it apart and burn it in good. So we might still have three in the tree shifter yet. I just couldn't bear cutting up the floor and those floor shift conversions, just, I know we got a really good duff conversion, but it's laying on my back and cutting holes in the floor and adjusting. And I just like a good old three speed. So we're gonna rip into this thing. I'm gonna burn this together. We're gonna slide it together and it's gonna work flawlessly. Is that a Tiffany? She's a, she's a smart cookie. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> It's a little bit stiff shifting. Hopefully we got it cleaned up a little bit better when I put it together this time. I think it's dimensionally where it needs to be. These T-bolts, they catch on here. They're a real bugger until you figure out how to do it. And I don't know that I've got it figured out. So you slide her in the hole and then you put the nut on and you just start it with like a thread or two. And there's two of them. The same thing with the other one. And then you just slide it on there and cross your fingers and hope that they drop in those holes and catch and you just tighten them up. Weird. But I guess it works. You gotta push them all the way in first. Then we'll feed our fake turn signal wire through. Get one started. You gotta slid on all the way and you tighten them down. And hope they catch. Now, will it shift? It's kinda like those will it blend videos. I'm gonna flick the Bic button. It shift. So push ahead, that should be first or reverse, which is this short one. Yep. Line them back up. If you can. Yeah, it's just stiff. 
She's stiff. I don't know. I don't have much faith in this thing. I think she just she's wallered out, kids. Why is that bushing not sitting in the right spot? I don't even want to admit how much time I have in this silly steering column. So everything should be lined up. So we should be able to shift. There we go. Oh, there. I should be on this long one. So I think once we get it in the vehicle and just cycle it, it's hard to hold. We don't have enough hands. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. We finished putting that together. We got to clean up where our spot welds were for this. We'll put this on. And I think we're just going to tack it in place until we're ready. Because that would be the right thing to do. Since when they cut this off, at least they did an okay job of it. Didn't completely mangle it. Then we're all ready to stick this thing back in. Let's see if it works. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Six hours later, it still needs a turn signal switch and a new shift collar. And it's all cobbled together. We gotta put this on. It needs all new bushings and bearings. But it's gonna be perfect for what we're gonna do, right? Gonna have to. Shout out to Landon Green hooking us up with the. He says it's a Mustang steering wheel. I don't know jack about Mustangs. So it's way better than that mini steering wheel. Now, if I can figure out how to get her bolted in place, those 516 bolts never lined up. Ah, there we go. I do kind of dig these wood grain steering wheels. Is it called a wood grain steering wheel? It's, it's like actual wood. Here's what it is. Duff's gonna come check her out. I like the looks of it already between the steering wheel and having the right length column, Duff. We are making strides. Oh my gosh, did we get that steering wheel on straight? Pretty dang close. How about that? Goes good with our Mustang seats. Duff approves of the Mustang seats, don't you? You gotta figure out how to put a horn cap on it though. What is going on there? Are we missing a bearing up top there, Duff? We can't be having that. Son of a biscuit. Much like Wes is a quadra bog expert after tearing one apart 19 times, I will be Ford Bronco steering column expert at this rate. I'm gonna look through our stash. I guess we forgot to put a bearing in there. Sweet. Look what came in the mail today. I had to get a switch with this connector, but here's the connector. It's got those two little tangers on there. Catches on those little tangers there. And then your brake lights don't come disconnected on you. It even comes with these little crimp on ends. So tech tip of the day. See how this is kind of it's got that notch on the top side. This little hook on the top there goes in that notch and you slide it in and that notch catches on it. So if you ever need to take one of these connectors apart you just reach in from this end and on the top side there slide your screwdriver in there bend that tang over and they'll slide out. And when you get it out you just bend that tang back up slides back together. Easy peasy. Lemon squeeze. I always like having the right connectors on, like my HEI harnesses, the ignition, and the, or the tack and the battery. That way they don't come off on you. The tack, not such a big deal, but battery, you don't want to lose that source going down the road. You don't just put a spade clip on there. Same thing with these. If either of these spade clips that I got on there currently were to fall off, you'd have no brake lights. So I think this whole setup, this switch shipped was like 20 bucks. We'll throw that on the shelf. Save it for a rainy day. Put that switch on there. More useless information for you. Use the right connectors if you can. And your real help. I was going to take both seats out, but as you can tell, one is occupado. Look at the, this is like the rear bed floor. They just kind of slid her all the way up here. It's yeah, it's not the right stuff, and it was cut off with a gas axe. We're going to put some seats in this thing, but there's some issues. Kind of like the boogers in your eyes. If you didn't sleep all day, you wouldn't have these boogers. First thing, these are Mustang seats. 
I don't know if they're the same seats as a Bronco. They look close enough to me. A couple of these studs are broke off. So we're just going to grind them all off flush because these are buggered up. And Baca. Bent over and everything else rusty. So we're just going to cut them off, weld these bolts on there. They're plenty long. The other thing is those seats, I think, are meant to, for a floor that sits like this. So I tried to find pictures of seat brackets and whatnot for these Broncos. We need to make like a riser so they kind of sit up like that. We might, we might just bolt them to the floor to call her good, huh, Duff? We gotta put those studs on there either way. I think we might end up making some risers. You could really be a hack and just weld the risers right to these seat tracks, but we're not that hacky around here. And the other thing is, since I got him out of that seat, Hey, I'm gonna, come on now, just take a break. Go lay down in one of your beds that we got in the shop. I'm gonna take this out of here. I don't know what Ford had going on here. Our folding table is unfolding. Oh, Look what you did. What'd you do, Richard? What'd you do? So the floor, instead of being flat all the way across, you just bolt it down like I was talking over there. It's got this big, this big hump right there. Point to it, Duff. Point to it with your nose. There you go. And so apparently they just put a chunk of railroad tie in there to shim up their seat. So once we get the bottoms of the seats figured out, we might have to figure out something there. We might... Let's see if we can't cut a chunk of that floor out of there. I don't, I don't know what to do. Let's just, this whole thing, it needs a whole new floor, front to back. And it's like real money. And I don't want to get into that thing this deep, right? Meow. Let's take that stupid heater out of there too, Duff. We don't need heat, do we? Moral of the story is we got to fix the bottoms of these seat tracks. We got to clean the cabin out of that thing. And then we got to make some adjustments, some risers, some, some fabric cobbling and stuff. All right, just pissed I stole his seat. Such an angry little dog. Who's here? Nobody. It's a good thing we didn't have a game of beer pong or something going on. Apparently, these tables are not rated for two Mustang bench seats. All right. Let's get to cutting and welding. We're gonna drill some holes for the seat. I set it in here, and if I were to raise it up like I think the factory seat risers are, I, I think I'm gonna sit and my head's gonna hit the roof or I'm gonna be staring through the top of the windshield. So we don't want that. So what I did was I took and measured from the center of the Bronco, which is right here where the fan switch is, there's a screw to the steering wheel. And I measured that same spot from here, and I know my seat track is 14 inches wide, so I transferred that line up to here and then went seven inches either side set my seat in here found out where my bolts are marked those used a carpenter square brought that back so our seat should be centered with the steering wheel we should be good to go this floor it, it must have been a bench seat which makes sense because it'll pick up why would you want buckets but i think you would want buckets you know full top so that you can sounds like the seat I could just call the guy that the guy who bought Lloyd my 55 Ford from me he said hey I know a guy by the cities that's got full removable top he wants half cab so he said he'd make me a trade and he'd throw in the rear seat so hopefully we've got something going on there full top coming stay tuned but I was asking him all the seat mounts and if he's got buckets he said yeah I got buckets and he says yeah there's a bracket over there and it's this floor dips way down on the passenger side so that the seat can tip ahead so that people can get in the back. I, was gonna, I said, so why is the floor not flat? He said, oh, it's because that seat tips ahead where this one 
supposedly a stationary, or you're supposed to get it on that side. I don't know. That's how my 72K5 Blazer was, too. That one tipped ahead. I think it was only on the passenger side. Anywho, we're just bulls put a seat in here, and then I think we might have to make some risers on the front. But this thing was definitely a bench seat originally. You can see a couple holes where it mounted. And you can see the terrible cobbled up stuff they got back here. This thing needs floors bad. These have been patched already. This part's got holes for that heater, and I don't know if they cut a hole for a shifter, and another hole for a shift linkage. And... Not good. Dewaki to the rescue. Always check to see what's underneath. You know, if you're going to drill through some nice wiring or something. When you're mounting seats or seat belts, make sure you put a big plate or a washer or something on there. You don't want your seat coming loose on you. A moment of truth. Let's see if we drill them in the right spots. Why isn't your side going in, Duff? Yahtzee! Yahtzee! Try that out for feel. Oh. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you could even raise it up much more, because you get... my legs aren't that big. So we're just sitting here giving her a feel. We're good centered. We can't go back any further. The time being with this threshold. That's what they call that piece, this divider. You know, if we had the full removal top or we just took everything off, we could move the seat back a hair, but I think we're good leg-wise. I don't want to raise the seat up any. It's hard to get my leg underneath the steering wheel. I don't want to go with too much smaller of a steering wheel. We had one of those. We didn't like it, did we, Duff? I think what I'm going to do is just make a little riser of sorts up front there and just leave it at the angle it's at. kind of like it. You got any ideas, Duff? I'm sure you do. We could actually probably just put two nuts on the bottom of this, call it good. Everybody wants to see fabrication. Just kidding, not everybody wants to. Go over to Puddin's Fab Shop and check him out if you want to see fabric cobbling. Should we, should we make something with some dimple dyes and whatnot in it, Duff? Yeah, probably not. Here we go. Just got done underneath there. Got our seat all bolted in. I did have to cut those bolts back off the front, put some longer ones in there. And then I found some poly spacers that were three quarters of an inch tall and five sixteenths inch inside diameter so they're not going to get rusty and i doubt they're going to collapse so use some big washers underneath so there's that three quarter inch cross member right here that runs the whole width so i had to put like a two and a half inch bolt there i know these aren't the right seats they are should still be adjustable if the tracks weren't all rusty but they're all the way to the back and that's where i need it because that's the length that my legs are and they look right and all I did was drill a couple holes in the floor, which isn't a big deal, because like I said, this floor is scabbed together anyway, and there's some big gaping holes in it from the previous owner, so we should be good. Let's give her a test drive. Yeah, your seat will be next. That one's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Guess that one's got a tip ahead. Oh yeah. It's not the most comfortable thing I own, but I think it'll work, Duff. That'll do, pig, that'll do. That'll do, pig, that'll do. Also, it's from the movie The Replacements. Everybody asks where that comes from. And I know they use that same line on Babe, but I watched that movie when I was like eight. Didn't think it was that great then, so I don't think it's great now. So we use That'll Do from The Replacements. This thing's gonna be good. We gotta figure out how to get a horn cap on here. Also, the blinker turn signal lever switch assembly showed up today, but we gotta get a seat in. We gotta get some other stuff done. Also, we got the brake switch connector on there, so we don't have to worry about our brake lights coming off on us. Yeah, I know. I'll get out of here so you can lay in the seat. Okay, back to work. Sweet. We got our second seat stuck in place. Drilled two holes in the back here. Uh, those caught the top lip of a cross member, so should be in there real good. Always make sure you got your tracks slid to where they gotta be. And that they're not one isn't halfway back and one halfway ahead don't ask me how i know so we got those dropped in back here the bolt on the inside here caught this transmission tunnel check her out duff i know we got a little spacer in there again oh my gosh just getting right up in my business and you can see we got to do something right in here you're awful brave sitting on that seat like it's a teeter-totter but i mean what do you think is it acceptable you want to shake hands 
What a what a guy. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Damn glad to meet you. Hi, Eric Stratton, Russ Chairman. Damn glad to meet you. So you can see why these seats tipped ahead. <laughs> you goon? What did you think was gonna happen? Told you it was a tripod. My word, you're a tripod. They tipped ahead right about here to get out of the way, because if this seat back rolls ahead, I can probably show you. God, these freaking Mustang seats have the silliest latch. So, I mean, that doesn't leave much room to squeak through there. So that's why they tip ahead. Yeah, and so they don't automatically latch. Well, mine don't anyway. So we gotta make some type of pedestal. And I did a little searching on the interwebs and it looks like just kind of a triangular piece. When it goes both directions, then it would pivot there. We're not gonna make ours pivot because there's no back seat to get into. For the time being, these seats gotta be recovered. Floor's gotta be redone. So we're just gonna make them stationary for now. Good enough for the girls we go with. So I'm gonna do a little CAD, cardboard aided drafting. I'm gonna see what we can come up with. And we gotta find some metal to make it out of. Can't wait. CAD of choice this week is Heilman's Old Style. Tech tip of the day, save your beer boxes, or at least a couple. You know, if you're a big sandwich fanatic like me, that'd be too many boxes. I don't do enough fabric cobbling. But the cardboard's way thinner and way nicer to work with than, you know, your standard Amazon box. So always save them. Plus, they make good wallpaper and backsplashes in your kitchen and whatnot. Patching up your windows that are busted. You name it, just really versatile stuff. I like it. All right, back to work. There we have it. I uh, gave myself a one inch flange on the inside on the base there. A little flange over here to tuck into it for a little strength. I kind of goofed up, but not really. There needs to be a one inch flange on this side. I thought about, you know, angling it over that way, but that would make it rigid from, you know, wanting to teeter around. Teeter totter and such. But I think that one inch strip will be just fine in there. We can always rework it later. And then we'll weld it over here. We'll put a little piece of one inch up here. Maybe we can go one inch. Nah, that's, that's just too much bending. I think we can bend this piece and we can bend this piece. I don't know if we can, I don't know how wide my die is. How wide is the die? I don't know, I got the carpenter square on your seat, but you don't, you're gonna tip it over again, you goon. Look at what you're doing to my Heilman's. It's not structural cardboard. Come on, man. This is why we can't have nice things. Okay, I'm gonna go turn that into metal. Yeah, I know I can't turn it into metal, but we're gonna, we're gonna do, you're gonna tip over. You're gonna tip over. Come on now. Go sit in the driver's seat. You go drive for a while. You silly dog. All right, we gotta get to work. There you go, we got a pretty good stand made up. I'm gonna do a little working on her yet. It's a little bit taller than I wanted. Son of a biscuit. I suppose we screwed up on our bends, but we'll burn these in. And we gotta drill some holes in the bottom here. And we gotta drill a hole in the top. And we'll see what we can do. Here we go. Also, I used a Beverly, well, knockoff Chinese Beverly shear and my press, but you could do all this with a vise and cutoff wheel like Puddin does. But I got the stuff, so, and I never hardly use it, so why wouldn't I use it? Now you know. Okay, let's go do a little welding.
All right, we got her welded, ground down a bit. Let's drill a couple holes and see how it fits. So, this thing was too tall. So I pie cut a little bit out of there. I'm gonna put her in place and tack it. Maybe even just burn the snot out of it. And it's all right to screw up. You know all them TV shows where everything's perfect and they get to the end and oh, the engine won't fire up or yada yada yada. There's a lot of trials and tribulations to get to those points. And those TV shows don't show that. What I'm trying to get at it here is it's all right to screw up. It's metal. You just cut it, re-weld it, add a piece in, grind it down, whatever you gotta do. But don't half A it, full A it. Never half two things. Whole life one thing. Fillet it? Fillet like a fish? No, like, you know what I mean. Don't uh, half arse it, full on do her up. Speaking of that, go check out Half Ass Customs. He's a pretty, pretty cool dude, Brent. That guy, I don't know, he must make a lot of mistakes because he gets a lot of stuff done. He's always doing something. We should probably clamp this with the locking pliers, but we're just gonna hold her by hand. Burn this in. I think it's gonna look pretty good. Maybe should have left that a little bit lower. Maybe could have narrowed it up. Could have added a nice swoop in here. You still can. But this has got that nice crude angular line that the rest of this floorboard crudeness has. So this will be just fine. All right, let's do some burning. There. You can hardly even tell until you look in there. Look at this guy. Even did a little uh, Puddin's Fab Shop. Put some dimple dyes in there. Hit her with the DA. Looks all professional. If I were to do it again, I think I would slant it back and make it narrower or slant it ahead. I don't know. Kind of looks silly being square, but it matches the rest of the rig. And then maybe I'd change my whole pattern layout on the dimple dyes. But she's plenty sturdy for the Duff Dog. Speaking of, just let him out. And who came back and rolled in the poopy poop? Look at this. You got her all down that side. You got this side a bit. You're on your hind quarter. You're pretty proud of yourself. So I guess we're gonna give you a bath instead of going home for the night. So that pretty much took all night mounting that seat. I guess we didn't really get much. Oh, I got that brake switch put in there. That's about it. This stuff just takes for flipping ever. Okay, bath time. No, don't get it poopy in your bed. You are such a silly, silly dog. Say bye to your bandana, you know. It was nice for the week and a half it lasted. Oh, are you so happy that you got a bath? Absolutely not, he says. Well, sorry, man. That's the way it goes. Yeah, lick it off. That's the beauty of when it's cold out. The poo freezes hard real fast, so we don't have to worry about Duff doing his thing in it. But now that it's warming up, you know, the poo stays fresh longer. So, plenty of fecal matter for the rolling. Right, Duffel up, I guess? Right. We should get you another bandana, huh? Should get one from the merch site. Speaking of that, go on the merch site. Get yourself a next level tee. These things are good. Get them a size bigger. If you're an XL like me, go all out. Get a double X. If you're large, get an XL. If you're schmedium, eat a cheeseburger. I never realized it. This thing's got a red bow tie on the front. Pickup doesn't. If you're schmedium, get a large. All right, we're punching out for the night. Bath time, bedtime. Oh, how pretty do you look after you got your bath and you're all dried up? So pretty. Okay, what are we doing next? Seats are in. Oh, let me move that stuff so you can test her out. Cyclops, these things are good. Go ask the Mopar madman. He had his stuck to the inner fender in one of his Mopars. Did like a 40 mile round trip, still there when he got there. Only thing is, they stick so good, if you don't find them before the light goes out, you don't find them at all. Hokely dokely. Hokely dokely. Steering's done, seats are done. What do you wanna work on next? We we're just talking about ratchet straps with old Mickelson Racing. He's picking up one of them fancy aluminum toppers. Do you like toppers or not? If you like toppers, you're probably from Minnesota. Blue Platers, they love those things, you know, like topper on a pickup best thing ever it's always you can always tell most puddle jumpers and they come over here trying to shoot ducks and geese i don't really care for toppers but if you're gonna put a topper on a rig you know an old rig i like the old aluminum aluminium ones you know with the bubble windows tinted windows and like the three vent shade windows and you know like maybe like a deer mural on it they're pretty cool and like some of the vintage 50s and 60s ones they're bringing good monies who'd have thunk anyway getting off subject 
Ratchet strap. He's hauling a homer topper. He needed some ratchet straps because he forgot to take them when he went to the big city. I want my ratchet strap back. I have that there because I don't trust the fuel tank strap. So we're going to get some blocks and block the fuel tank up and get that strap out of there and modify the end of it since we're, you know, in the fabric cobbling stage. So let's do that. But let's not do it like we did last time where I was struggling and almost died underneath. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's full. Uh, Duff, you want to wanna hold this? All right, here we go. So let me show you Ford guys. What's going on here? This is our mock-up frame rail. It's got this slot, 3 8 inch is tall and 2 and 8th wide. And this slides into the frame like that. That's supposed to hold the fuel tank. But as you can see, it just kind of can slide in and out. So you tighten up that bolt and it just pulls it down and around. And this might not be Ford's fault. This could be the Chineseum aftermarket part we got here. I don't know. So I'm thinking it's supposed to slide in, you know, stick one side of this T in and just come back like that. And it's supposed to be wider than that slot. That's what these notches are for. So you can sneak her in, but that's not the case. So I got a chunk of scrap steel. This is about three inches wide. We're going to cut that half inch wide, the width of that. And we're going to weld that to there. And we'll see if we can't sneak it through. And then that'll catch because if you come at an angle, it should catch it. But if you come straight on with this one, it, it shouldn't come in and out. I don't know. I mean, maybe you got to bend these tabs over. Am I doing it wrong, Ford guys? But that seems dumb. You shouldn't have to bend those over. And, you know, if you, you could bend it down, but then it's, it's just going to want to come straight again. So I don't know. I wish they would have just had a, you know, eye bolt on each end or some way of clamping it instead of just an interference fit or whatever they call that. So that's what we're going to do. All of the fabric cobbling this week. Good times. I'm going to mark this out. We're going to go over to the old Powermatic 140 bandsaw. Pretty sweet item. It's better than the cutoff wheel. It's kind of like, oh, what do you want to say? Like a power hammer is like, you know, the hard rock. And that's what the cutoff wheel is, the hard rock. And then, you know, like English wheel is Mozart. That's what we're going to stick with is, is Mozart this week. Using that bandsaw that we hardly ever use. Okay. We got our piece cut out here, and I am going to try to center it up. I'll put a couple of tack welds on it, and we'll go see if it fits. It's going to be way too, oh, it might not be way too long. I don't know. Well, we can do a test fit right here. Oh, she's going to be a hair too big. I'm going to go chop just a hair off, just to see here, and then we'll come back. Let's mark the center of this and the center of this and see what we can configure. It can be as long as we want on the one end, but it can only be how long can it be on the other end. Let's do a little maths here. It can hang off about a half inch. So we could we could weld it on there offset. Nobody's ever gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. And then it's gonna be plenty wide. That'll get us close enough. We'll whittle it down if we got to. So, I'm gonna burn that on there with that line lined up with that edge. We'll see what happens. So when I weld this, I'm gonna weld along this side and I can weld under here and over here and here and here. But you don't wanna weld right here because that's gonna put stress in that area and that area is holding this entire tank up. So you don't wanna weld it. Right there, you're gonna have a stress riser. It might not crack, but that's what would cause it to crack if it was gonna break anywhere. So here, 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 and here is gonna be way more than enough weld. We'll probably be fine if we just weld it on each end like that. Don't weld right there. Got it? Got it. Watch me forget and weld it there. Of course, part of being a fabric cobbler, Went to go do some welding, 
and my tank was empty. Good news is we can pick those up next door after hours. A lot of people, that's what sucked when I lived in the city. You had to wait till Monday morning to get a tank of Argon. I run C25 in mine. I believe it's from Prax Air, but I don't think Prax, I think they got brought out by Linwell or something like that. It's an M style tank on my Miller 140 here and a tank of that stuff is $96.97 or $97.90. It's a hundred bucks, American doll hairs. I'm sure somebody's paying more than that, but yeah, we're gonna lose the shop on this Bronco for sure. 96 flipping dollars for some gas. Don't worry, inflation's not real. Okay, enough crying. Let's do some welding. So there you can see just how much wider this guy is. Well, let's stick it in this gal, let's see if it fits. Oh yeah. Provided my makeshift slot here, my pocket slot is the right size. This should work. And if you halfway get it centered up, there's no way that's coming out of there. No way, where's that guy going? Nowhere. He's going nowhere. So I'm gonna slide underneath, see if she fits. Okay, I forgot to factor in. The exhaust is gonna be difficult to finagle around. And the leaf spring as well. Dang it, Mordski. Dang it, anyhow. I mean, if we took the exhaust and the leaf spring off, it would probably slide right in there. Just twist a little, come on. Do the twist. Engineer would say, but it worked in the model. I'll tell you what, if we get this in there, she ain't coming out on her own, that's for sure. That is for sure. Oh, it's, it's still so hot too. I wonder if we just take the exhaust loose, oh, we could sneak that in there. Is that gonna give us the room we need? Okay, you got the tip in. That's what she said. <laughs> this might have been a bad idea. Can you give me a hammer, Del? Oh, come on, baby. Look at that. There's no way that's gonna come out of there. It's also maybe no way it's going in there, but we're gonna try. Let's give her the old tap, tap, tap -a -roo. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap -a -roo. Oh, yeah. That thing is in there for good. Ready for all the rear impacts. Watch out, Ford Pintos. Here's what we got on the driver's side. See, couldn't they just make it like this with a J hook, J bolt, I bolt, T bolt, U bolt, whatever bolt it identifies as on each end? That would have been way more good. So hopefully this helped somebody that's having this issue or Got a bunch of people screaming at me, you idiot, you're putting that thing together all wrong. Nah, that's probably a lot more likely. That's the way it goes. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, San Diego. And then, that should be plenty tight. We'll back this nut down and jam her up against it. Let's call that a jam nut. I feel like somebody should have a joke, a dad joke related to jam nuts. What kind of nights love to rock out on party night on Friday nights? Jam nuts. <sighs> cool. Much safer now. Let's figure out what we're gonna do next. Well, in case you didn't notice, we don't have hubcaps on this thing. Put some different wheels back on the orange pickup that we stole these from, because that pickup looked pathetic with the old Bronco wheels and tires on there. And in the meanwhile, we don't have hubcaps on this thing. I don't know what to tell you. So I went on the flea bay, bought some hubcaps, 
bought six of them. They're for two-wheel drive, because four-wheel drive, guys want big bucks, and all you gotta do is drill a hole. It's a three and a half inch hole, pilot hole that you need. I don't have a three and a half inch bit. I got a three and three eighths. So you could maybe make it fit. If you got her perfect, you could maybe make it slide on. I know. But I got a three and five eighths, and that's what I did the last ones with, so it'll be just fine. So we're gonna take and find the worst two out of these six. We're gonna drill holes in them. And this one's she's pretty scuffed up and worked up. You don't want to you don't want to drill holes in nice hubcaps. Is what I'm getting at. And these things, I think I paid about 150, 160 bucks for all of them shipped. They're not giving hubcaps away anymore. These that's a nice one. We're definitely not drilling in that one. That one's pretty respectable. But that one's good too. That one's real good too. We have at least one really good spare. Come on, let's just huck this one on the wall. That one's not that nice. You know what? We got some pretty nice ones, and we're still gonna have one nice spare. We're just, we're just we're not gonna use this one. Somebody's really sanded on this one, and all the black paint's missing. And it's got some rust starting. There's some rust in that lip rattling around. So we got the two that we're gonna. This one's got a little hooey there, and this one's got a little hooey there. Either of them are not. They're both way nicer than the rest of the rig. So let's take our tape measure and find the center. It'll be easier from the back side, just to, and then I'll figure out where it lays and we'll transfer it to the front. Capiche? A capiche. So that is two and a half, three and a half. What's that? Half of that inch and three quarter. Right there. We turn it this way and go inch and three quarter. We'll do right at the bottom. This guy. Wait, that's the high part. Right there. Okay. Right in the center of the crest. Because why wouldn't it be? So now we're gonna see how much snort the Dewaki's got. The Dewaki really doesn't like these full saws. Here we go. Don't walk on me now. Oh my gosh, that must have walked real bad because that is not centered at all. What the French. We're going to be able to get another one further over? Probably not. Son of a biscuit. No! Rut roll, Raggy. This one is, she's going to be ugly. We should have started with the crappy one. Come on, little buddy, you're fine. You're fine. You got this. What is, what's wrong with the transfusion? You gotta go with low range? Apparently these hole saws do not like stainless. Oh, for cheese and rice. We really hosed up Vicky. Yep. I think my whole saw is knockered. Three and three eighths it is. I put that on the shopping list. You only get two sets of hubcaps out of a Lennox three and five eighths whole saw. Okay. Three and three eighths, here we go. What the French? Well, are these hubcaps made of? Unobtainium? This process shouldn't be this hard. Screw another hump cap. These teeth look like they're from South Dakota. I'm on math. Now we're real carpenters. We got the Black & Decker Becker Wrecker single speed jigsaw with steel blade. It's gonna be ugly, but we can file it down later. Maybe. You know, other than the spot we started and over there, it ain't half bad. We can get in there with a Dremel tool and clean that up. But frick is that loud. I bet it's sharp too. Oh, 
Look at how good that turned out. I watched how terrible it fits. Oh, it fits over the hole, right, Morty? Doesn't fit on the rim. How can that be? Ran it through my head. I got these same hubcaps on that pickup, which were on these wheels, which I took off these wheels, put on the other wheels. Same hubcap, right? Nope, one's a nine inch, one's a 10 inch. And of course, out of those six hubcaps, only two of them are 10 inch. Positive note, we didn't ruin a hubcap that we can use. Well, at some point we could probably use them. I can't believe that Ford would have two of the exact same hubcap and different diameters. So I don't know what those fit, because these are for half ton. Are those for like car wheels? Are they for like a Ford Courier? Econo lines? I don't know. This Bronco is just giving me the shaft. Dry. So that was like a hundred bucks wasted. So now we gotta find two more hubcaps. So if you got some hubcaps you're willing to part with, hit us up with an email, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. We for sure need two. And uh, like that yellow 71 Ford pickup, that had like the unfinished, just like the gray version. These are the nice stainless ones. I think they look a lot better. So of course you gotta pay more for those because they're prettier. So we're just gonna put these back in the box here as a mistake made today. Why couldn't the two have been the small size and the four have been the big size? Cause that would just be too easy. But now you know how to make two wheel drive hubcaps and a four wheel drive hubcaps, but you probably knew that. But make sure you got a real good bit before you get started. Cause these Linux are good bits, but they're used up. They're only good for about four hubcaps. Cause that's how many I had done up to this point. I'm gonna go have a sandwich and think about the sacrifices we've made on this silly Bronco. See you in a minute. Well, since the hubcap thing went so terribly wrong, that lower bumper tube has always been bent and it's always bothered me. So we're gonna take some frustration out on that thing. Duff's gonna hide. Tube ain't the right diameter. So I'm just gonna put an adapter tube in and see if that works. Of course it's not because it's at the ground. Son of a biscuit. This is going to be the ticket. This guy. Yeah. Now. We just need to block her up somehow. The problem with blocking it up is I think the other side's it's going to keep this from going down, but I think it's just going to lift the other side up. We're going to find out. I mean, nothing else has worked thus far. Stupid Fords. Alright. It's going down. Probably not. A little bit more. It's almost as awesome as tying a car to a tree to straighten it out. We better get our measuring device. Three inches. Three. Oh, let's get real precise. Three and an eighth. Three inches. We need to go an eighth inch. Money in the bank. Way better. Now if only that bumper wasn't attached by hopes and dreams. So as you know, we cheaped out on the brakes last time. We didn't do drums and shoes, and they're bad. And we screwed up the drums, taking it apart, because you gotta take the drum off with the hub. And we're gonna take the hub off and open that up, see what's going on in there. These are warns. I think they're from the factory though, judging by the decal on the dash. I know everybody hates watching me do brakes, so I'm gonna try to do it as fast as I can. Let's do this. So these horn hubs are held on with some Allen screws. We're gonna take all those out. And then we'll see what's inside of there. Why are the birds chirping at nine o'clock at night? How does this guy work? Looks like there's some machine threads. Oh, some machine threads 
push that gear out right there with all those teeth and those lock into the axle shaft because that's attached to this hub that's what ties it to that I'm guessing we need to keep that pin in there somewhere right there that guides everything from spinning oh there's a bunch of those pins there's a bunch of those bolts laying on the floor now snap ring sure enough the guy up there trying to lose it Gotta get that gear off oh come on is there another snap ring in there or what where's the cyclops There's our snap ring. A little snap ring inside the groove snap ring right about here. Pop this snapperuski out of here. And then maybe it'll come out of there. Now, who's your daddy? Yeah. Woohoo! Woohoo! Now what do we got? Oh, somebody sent us some sockets. I wonder if we got the right socket. I don't remember who sent us these, but thank you. Even though they look like they were in a fire that got put out with salt water. They'll work just fine. Dang! We got a perfectly good impact. What are we doing this far? Get the BDBH out here. Peasy lemon squeeze with that guy. Yes, and there's a washer in between the two. It's got some type of locking device built in it. Looks like it's got some holes. Probably lined up on a pin of sorts. We had two coaxing devices, maybe it'll go off. Come on now. So yeah, it's got that keyway that that rides in. And then there's a pin on that nut in there that rides in the holes in that washer. And that's what locks it. Then we get another nut. Drop that in the dirt. That's what you want to do. Now this guy slides off. Yeah, so in the previous video, you saw me heating these and beating on these. Yeah, don't do that because the brake drum is swedged onto these wheel studs. You're supposed to press the wheel studs out, put the brake drum on, and then press the studs back in. So that's what we'll do when we're putting it back together. Now we're gonna put some new shoes on while we're in here. Maybe clean up this adjuster. I got a new hardware kit, so maybe we'll put that on if it looks like it needs it or it'll fit. The way things are going, we're just hoping that it'll fit. <laughs> Good news is all the hardware looked good and the stuff that came in the Rock Auto kit didn't look any better. Bad news is the short shoe should be on the front. Did, we have them in, did they have installed right? Uh, both these shoes are the same length. And the adjuster was installed backwards so that the star wheel did not line up with the hole on the backing plate, so there was no way to adjust them. The good news is, our new shoes are in much better shape. Short shoe always goes to the front. Not always. There's some early Ford applications where they're bass backwards, But it's bass backwards from what you think. The long shoe goes on the back, short shoe goes in the front. This is the primary shoe, which is bass backwards. You'd think the primary shoe would be the big shoe. It's actually the short shoe. Short shoe is primary, long shoe is secondary. Somebody's going to want to argue with me, but that's just the way it is. So now I'm going to clean up this spindle, clean up, we might put, clean up the bearings. Uh, should we grease the bearings? How do they look? They look fine. We'll clean them up a bit, see how they look. Maybe the next time around we'll put new bearings in, because we like doing things multiple times, especially with this Ford. We got to knock those wheel studs out anywho. So, let's do that. Well, press is getting a workout this week. This thing's 
Pretty handy. There we go. Let's see if we can't screw up. Oh, we knocked the whole hub out. Didn't take the wheel stud. Scratch the idea of needing the press. The holes for the wheel studs are larger in this one. So we don't have to worry about that. Good, bad, or indifferent? I don't know. We'll see. She sits on there pretty good. So we'll clean up the hub and the spindle, check the bearings out, throw it all together. Oh my word, it just continues with this thing, don't it, Duff? So it looks like it's a trostal seal. I've never seen one of those. It's like leather in there. It's definitely not rubber. Clean the hub up. That's no bueno. And outside bearing. That one's a little chewy. Yeah, look at those. Those things are no bueno. And you know, the inside race was fudged. So we need a Timken set 37 and a 35 and a wheel seal. And this goes in there somewhere too. We're gonna pretty near have a restoration on our hands, aren't we Duff? So since we've got a restoration on our hands, we quick fog that real nice brake drum. And a quick fog is about all it is. So now I gotta try to find some wheel bearings and seals. It never ends with this Bronco. It never ends. No, we're not going for an RIDE. Let's see if we can find some parts tomorrow. Finish putting this thing together. Son of a biscuit. So you look up some part numbers for some seals and bearings. Looks like it's a set of A30. Sevens on the inside and 35s on the outside. Got those coming from Napa Todd. Actually, he had those on hand. He didn't have the inner wheel sill. Should be there tomorrow morning. So hopefully we can get that together tomorrow. Ford, got to go with a serial number break or measure them by dimensions because you know they changed them, but could be first year things. Anyway, hopefully we got the right one coming. In the meanwhile, let's pull this side apart, get everything cleaned up and ready to go. I might even, I might even paint the hubs. I don't know. It's just going to make these lockouts look that much worse. See how I'm feeling. I feel like cleaning because I probably won't. We'll paint that new brake drum and the ones on the rear because why not? Let's blow this apart and then we'll go into the backs. Oh, we got to do shocks too. Never mind. <laughs> When I was pulling this brake drum off, it reminded me of how bad our tie rod end is, so we shall see if we can get that out of there. Don't worry, we'll put that jack stand in play while we do it. Hopefully, I remember to do that. So we don't die. Yep, she's bad. Usually when I do these tie rod ends, I like to get this adjuster sleeve because they're usually under 20 bucks and it's just worth it to not have to deal with these things because usually they're so beat up and cross threaded and don't like dealing with life. But maybe it'll thread out easy on this end and we'll leave it on that end. And I think I got the tools to do these things too, if I can find them. It's like a little hook. It's like the claw. Nothing can stop the claw. Just wraps around it and then it grabs in that seam. They're kind of a pain to use, but it doesn't mar them up real bad like a pipe wrench does that every other cowboy's used on this. Also the steering stabilizer bracket. 
needs some loving. You can see her just flopping the wind down there. I don't know if those are original equipment or not. Either way, we should address it. But yeah, we can't really do much here other than clean them up and maybe paint them until we get some new parts. We could knock the races out. We're we'll waiting on parts here. So let's see if we can get that split. Try to get this nut off in the whole, what do you call it? Tie rod end, bolt is spinning. So we're gonna let the front end down on the jack stand. We're gonna put the jack on there and try to seat that taper in there and then maybe it'll come out. Maybe this thing's, oh, hopefully it didn't screw up the uh, spindle from riding in that for years loose. But the cotter key was in it, so it should have been loose. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Hopefully that works, putting some tension on it to get that nut off. There you go, a little heat goes a long ways. In case you don't remember, big expenses that are well worth it, torches. Torches and air compressors and welders. Get a torch before you get a welder though. So hopefully we can just let the jack down and it falls out of there. Oh, we should we should measure some overall lengths first so we know what we got. That way it's halfway in alignment, maybe. Forty-eight inches from the grease circ here to the grease circ, same spot on the other side. Don't forget that. I don't think. Oh, my tool might work on this. So the tool looks like we got an OTC part number 6275. It's got all these fancy claws over there. Do you need one of these? No, probably not. But I got one, so we're going to use it. Probably only the second time, maybe third I've ever used it. But it takes some getting used to. Son of a biscuit. Is that nut still hot? Not too bad. Maybe we gotta have this latched in place to use it. Maybe we didn't put the torch away because I feel like this might need some heat. A little rusty. So this sleeve has a notch in it. Usually it's split all the way across. This one's only split about three quarters of the way. And you put that little hook in that notch and you turn it whichever way you think you need to turn it. Oh my goodness. Ow. Yeah. We're going to give that some heat. Get that clamp out of the way. Oh, it's just spreading it. If we can bend it enough. You imagine how much fun this would be to do without this tool? Again, this is why I like to buy new tie rod in sleeves, tie rod coupler sleeves, whatever, I don't know, sleeves, what I call them. This one's gonna be wasted by the time we're done. Oh, that's hot. That's hot too. Everything is hot. That's still hot. There. Still hot. Now we just hope everything fits. This thread's the same. Threads are a little chewy. We want to clean those up a bit. Let's see how this fits in there. Hopefully they didn't. <sighs> no. What do we do if they egg that all out? Got to buy a whole new knuckle? That would not be good.
Those shocks are done. Let's work on this shock. Oh boy. Hoofta. She's pretty tacoed there on the end. Guess that bolt should be straight with the shock. So that clamp must have went right here at one point and got hit by something. Oh yeah, the shock. Can I get her spun around? Yeah. Got a pretty good hooey right there. A little whiskey dent, if uh, you will. Look at the clear tub and tile caulking on the front diffy cover. Oh, and missing bolts? No, no problem. I mean, if I was missing a bolt, I think I would take one of the top ones and put it there, but they probably snapped it off. Who knows? Anyway, oh, it's got the tag though. We can see what it's got for gears. Let's do that. It's probably Ford probably has some fantastic way you gotta translate it. It says C8TA, so that means it's a 68 tag, and this is a 66, so maybe the front end's been swapped out. I don't see a ratio on there though. But yeah, she's uh, slid over some rocks. Look at the bottom of this. Cover and diff is all mashed together. Seems lived a hard life. I don't know why they got, took the fill plug out, put this 90 degree in there so they could get more fluid in the front. Or is that factory original? I think one of you Bronco guys knows. I'm guessing it's just supposed to be a regular plug on there. I don't know, you could maybe get another half pint more in there. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this apart and uh, weld that bracket back up. Hopefully it holds together. I don't know if this bracket is original or if this is something added on. I'll tell you here shortly. That definitely looks like something that was added on. Although the welds look much better than the rest of the cowboy work. So you know what we're gonna do? We're just, we're just gonna unbolt it for now. And we'll throw the extra pieces in a box yeah, to be uh, thrown away or to be sold to this thing to the next owner. That'll be easy enough to resolve. Fixed it, cause that, those look like regular U-bolts off of a universal joint. Nice fabric cobbling. All right, we're gonna blast this thing off, work on something else. Well, they even put a couple of tack welds up there so that didn't slide around. Now, if you cut that off, nobody would ever know that it had a steering stabilizer. So let me know, Bronco guys down below. Do these things need stabilizers? Do they come with them factory? Should I put one back on? Well, let me know. And what is this all about? Why is there a tab on that drag link? What's that do? What do you do? Any type of steering stop? We may never know. We're gonna go see Napa Todd tomorrow and we're gonna bring our old parts with just to make sure he doesn't hose us over and send us with bad parts. Always a good thing if you can take your old parts to the parts store so you don't get home after hours and go to put your parts that don't fit on. At least this way you can harass your local parts folks. So let's knock these out here. I'm just gonna get a long punch. Just try to catch the edge of the race, knock her out of there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Get yourself a nice wood stool. Works great for painting, beating on races, whatever you need to do. Works as a English wheel when you put your oil pan on it and straighten flanges out. It's so versatile. Well, I felt it hit. Oh, yeah, sure enough. She's about ready to come out of there. It's bottomed out on her stool. There we go. My foot are upside down. And repeat the process with the outer bearing. I always want to make sure you're hitting on the right spot, though. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. I think we'll leave the other ones in. Maybe not. I don't know. Now we can clean this up, clean the old grease out. Get ready for paint if we're gonna do that. I don't know. I don't like paint stuff. And when we put them in, I'll show you when we put them in how we put them in. There's a tool for it. If you're real good with a punch, you can do it with a punch, but I got some drivers for it that work way better. Mm -hmm. 
New day, new episode of Mower Man. Oh, he's masked up today. Rain or shine, we gotta make that run with the old John Deere. What is that, a D125s? Doesn't have the uh, slippers on. We put real shoes on when it's raining out. Oh, we duff. You gonna show them the parts you got? Did we go see Napa Todd? Um, 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 um. We got us some new seals and some bearings. These are the uh, high-end Napa stuff. What a terrible name. But we brought our old parts down, so everything looks like it's gonna fit. We got our power built Kit 66 bearing race and seal driver master set here. And we got our inner wheel bearing race. It's got this little driver that goes in any one of these different attachments. This is a 2.995 inch version. And you can see they got a little taper on them, which lines up with the race. So you don't scar them up, rides on that top surface. Now, we're gonna whack them in there. Ain't you them <laughs> kids that have been whacking off in my tool shed? Aren't we Duff? Let's do it. And we'll grease some bearings, pop some seals in. We'll be going for R-I-D-E's in no time. You can spell now? Man, I knew you were a smart dog, but you impress me every day. Also, we got a new shifter bell column thinger. So we uh, decided to put some paint runs in that because it was anodized, I don't know. It was some weird color. Probably the same color as the one that's in here, galvanized. So maybe we can put that on someday. We're gonna get some brakes done because we gotta do the rears yet too. You want me to open that door, don't you? I can't because there's a tire leaning against it. All right, seals and bearings are going together. Well, I ran into an issue. And I noticed it when I took it apart. This race does not fit very tight in the hub. So I think it spun one other time. And our hub is out of tolerance. So how are we gonna address that? Let's see if I can find the race that was in that one. See those two races? Mitch can't tell which one came out of passenger side hub and which one came on the driver's side hub this is the passenger side you could tell she was spinning in there so look at how rusty or I don't know torn up those bearings are this is the sleeve from this side passenger side too there's been some water in there at one point and I think that was pretty hard on the bearings I never did clean up the bearings on that side because the driver's side was shot, so we're doing them all. I'm guessing the passenger side was even worse. But that race has definitely been spinning in there. So I think what we're gonna do is, it's called peening. Basically, you just put a whole bunch of little marks on there to hold it in place. It's not ideal, but short of getting an oversized race and doing a bunch of machining, I don't know what else that we can really do here. Yeah, look at how chewed up that is. These things were smoked. I suppose you could put some JB Weld in there and use that to hold it in place or Loctite. Let's do a sample. Let's try peening this. See how it works. Now usually you would want to just take a punch and peen the actual hub, but since we can't get in there, we're gonna try peening the race itself. You know, so on this bearing, we can just take our punch and hit it all the way around but I can't get at the one because it sits down about right there. I've never done it on the race side. I don't like doing this. This is some shady used car salesman stuff that everybody knows I'm so good at. Probably need to put it, this is some hard stuff. This race is gonna be a lot harder than that. And it does not wanna scratch it. Should be doing this in the vice. Yeah, it doesn't even put a mark in that son of a gun. Hold that thought, we'll be right back. I had a little discussion with a Tiffany, and she said, just get in there and try to mar that up as best you can. Just try to retain it. And then we're gonna put some red Loctite on there. She also said that there's some type of retaining cement, something or other, Loctite fluid, something that they, is designed for doing this said thing, but we don't have that, so. We're just going to use the red stuff because nothing's more gooder than the red. 
Let's see what we can get in there. That's, oh, I wish we had a longer punch. Well, what the hey, this bar should do it. Maybe. All you're doing here is just trying to screw up the surface that's nice and perfectly machined so that that race don't spin. Got this thing all cleaned up with brake cleaner. Trucker Bob's our red thread locker sponsor this week. We're just gonna sh slather this thing up. A little's good, a lot's better, right? Now hopefully it goes in a little harder this time and that red Loctite's gonna do its job and hold it from spinning. The ideal solution would be to find a new hub here. But we're sick of throwing parts at this stinking Ford. Oh yeah, she's already going in harder. I feel good about that. I don't even know if we needed the red Loctite. There. It's gonna be real nice. Let's wipe that red thread locker out of there so it don't get engaged in our other parts that don't need thread locker on them. Here you go, your worthless knowledge of the day if you got a race that spins. Peen your hub. Don't try to peen the race because I don't know what they're made out of, but they're hardened. It's gonna be way harder to peen. Be careful sitting on any stools that Mort's can repair. Here's my preferred method for grease and wheel bearings. I don't know what these things are called. Basically it's just a cone, this threaded shaft that goes through there. It's got a grease jerk on the top. So you just hook your grease gun up to it, give her a couple pumps, wait till you see grease come out the bottom of the cup or the cone or whatever you want to call it. Wait till you see grease coming out in there. Smear a little bit more on the outside, and you're ready to go off-roading. I have greased them by hand, it's just messy, it takes forever. These don't work so great on really small wheel bearings, they don't work great on big wheel bearings. They make different styles of these where you push them down. Hey look, this one's made in the USA. It's even got a patent, 6247564. I think this is a Lyle brand, I've had it for quite a while. As far as grease, I don't use wheel bearing grease, I just use whatever's in the gun hasn't failed me yet so I know they make wheel bearing grease and different all kinds of types of different greases I just grab whatever's in the gun and whatever's in the gun is whatever we found was cheap at the store sure it'd be nice to have one of them electric grease guns for the handful of times I ever use a grease gun there she's just starting to peek through spin her apart here and I screwed it up by spinning out the grease kind of smeared around, but you can see that it came all the way through that cone, so she's good to go. So now I'll pull that out of there, and I'll take this excess grease, and rub that in those rollers, and we'll put some extra in the hub. I don't know, if you're supposed to put extra wheel bearing grease in the hub, some people swear by it, other people say it doesn't do no good. I figure it can't hurt. A little is good on the grease, a lot is better. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to smear it in the hub. How much sparing is that? I guess I knew the inside bearing, outside bearing. Boop. Take the excess stuff off your finger, smear that in there. Get her in all them splines for the 4WD component tree. Or pull it, didn't even know it. We just got to do the inside bearing and pound the seal in. All right, I'm gonna do three more bearings. So I know not everybody knows everything what I'm doing on here. We're trying to teach you a couple of things. So what I'm doing here with this pack and grease and these wheel bearings is we're taking grease from the gun and we're pushing it inside each one of these rollers. And that's what that taper does. It fits all different sizes and that taper seals right around here. So that grease has to go somewhere. So it has to go through these bearings and I'm waiting for it to come out the backside of these rollers. And you can do that by hand. You can take a big glob of grease and you put it right there in your palm and you pull your sleeve up so you don't make a mess. And you pull your other sleeve up so you don't make, get your, your sleeves all dirty, Ma gets mad at you. And you put that blob of grease right there or you can start up here wherever. And you just, man, it's been a long time since I've done that. And you just keep packing it just like that and that, then that imaginary grease right there. And you, and you work it around and you try to keep this end clean because you want to keep packing it until you see that grease peeking its head out. Then you keep going a couple more times. And once that grease is all the way around between all those rollers, 
and you smear it all around like I just did, and you put it back together. And there's your more worthless knowledge for the day on what packing bearings is like. These things are, I wouldn't say a godsend, but I just, I don't mind getting my hands dirty, but if I don't have to, why would I? And you can put the gloves on, but the first thing you do is you tear the glove, and then you get grease wedged everywhere where it wouldn't be, and it is what it is. More useless information for you. That's what we're known for here. That and me being grumpy, apparently. Yeah, now I decided to put the old Venom Steel Harbor Freight Special gloves on. See, they get holes in them right away. My hands get all slimy, sweaty. So I cleaned up all the components here that go inside the four-wheel drive. We got our the first nut we put on. See how it's got that little pin there? And then we got this water shirt that we slide in. It's got that little tang that fits in the groove on the spindle. And then that pin lines up in one of them holes. And that keeps it from turning. And then we jam this guy up against it holds it in place so that that can't come off. And then this is the snap ring that holds this guy in place. And this snap ring holds the center of it in place. This is a lockout here. And you see the inside of this turns. So this stays locked to the axle shaft and this stays locked to the hub. And when they engage that, the two lock together. I'll show you here, see how it pushes that gear in the center there. Oh, I suppose it'd be the perimeter out. And that locks everything in place. So we're cleaning this all up. And there's another snap ring right here. Also, if you were wondering why I didn't use my seal driver or my bearing driver to put the seals on the back side of those hubs, it's because it's just too easy to just hit them with a hammer and go knock them in there. So that's what I did there. I know he could use one of those bearing drivers for pound the seals into actually that's what they're for but we didn't okay so i just want to show you that there's one more snap ring here and there's a thrust washer in there and we'll just clean this all up put a little grease on it put her back together oh look at that like there's been water inside of these we'll get some of that old grease out of there yeah not good it should be fine though okay back to cleaning well I'll be gosh dang there is a needle bearing inside of there and it's not in very good shape the needles don't want to turn actually what is that a rimming torrington it's a y dash 2610 this is easy enough to take apart we'll just take those allen screws out a couple snap rings we can pop this out put this bearing in later but yeah it could definitely use one and that bearing rides on this surface here it's probably just best to get some whole new lockouts okay i think i'm done showing you stuff i'll quit now just kidding, we're not done yet. Took and was blowing some air on this and we blowed apart our Torrington bearings. So now we get to smear some grease in there and put that back together. Even though, oh, they are kind of rolling. Hopefully we can breathe some life back. Oh, no, now they're just dropping everywhere. I love putting needle bearings back together. It's a favorite pastime of mine. Said nobody ever. Lockouts back together. Smeared some grease on that gear and that Torrington bearing. I think Torringtons are like a style of bearing even. They're so good at it that they named them after them. And if you take all these roll pins out, you can actually turn that mating gear to this mating gear right out of there by spinning it on the whatever machine threads for that piece. It was really cruddy back in there, so I'm glad I took that apart, cleaned it up. Of course, the battery died, so I didn't get to show you boys and girls that. I know, I'm disappointed too, Duff. We got one side to clean up, but we're out of, you know, bar stools to do this on. So let's stick one side together, and then we will clean up the other side, and put that side together, and hopefully we'll be done with the front here, other than our Torrington bearing is shwasted. Let's get after it.
the Bronco saga continues. You know how the passenger side was significantly rustier inside? Well, can you guys see those needles? They're not parallel with the gear. They're all cockeyed in there. Because they've been hot. And they've been rusty. Well, they were rusty. They were good. And then they got rusty. And then they got hot. And everything's there. Oh my gosh, they do kind of move. Surprisingly. But they're they're smoked. You can see how hot that thing's been. And you can see... The surface that they ride on on this gear is chooched out too so again if uh somebody out in bronco land has a spare hub for one of these you know, we don't set the bar very high for our parts if you got a lockout for a ford let us know and you can see these gears are a little bit chewed up i don't know if that's because people didn't lock them in they didn't get locked in all the way and they chattered and tore them up or what i mean we could probably put a bearing in it and it'll work but that surface is not in good shape. Yay, Bronco. This is the part I didn't show you on the last one. So you turn that son of a biscuit around like that, pushes it out, and then you turn this clockwise. Look at how chewy this, the other side is bad. This side's even worse. Just gotta take those roll pins out of there. I'm gonna go clean this up. And that's it for parts to clean up. We can stick it back together, even though it's not in very good shape. So I hit this with some brake cleaner and I also hit that cut on my thumb. Found it. So I'm wondering, I got that ultrasonic cleaner, which Chin's got stashed away in his shed because his old lady doesn't like the smell of pine saw in the garage. Anybody use one of those ultrasonic cleaners to take grease and stuff off like this? Does it does it work? Comment down below. Let me know before I waste my time trying it. I probably should get a parts washer. You know what I would need? One of those CUDAs. If somebody wants to buy us a CUDA parts washer, parts cleaner thinger, that would be, I would be forever indebted to you. Those things are the cat's pajamas. Until then, brake cleaner and air hose it is. Ready to put that side back together. So you know how I usually rate a job on how difficult it is by how many beers it takes? Well in this one, it's by blue paper towels and by brake clean. And this is a two can of brake clean and a half a roll of paper towels. Tech tip of the day, I always keep a box close to your toolbox for throwing trash in. That's a lot of blue paper towels. The two cans of brake cleaner in the trash. And a lot of hand soap. We should be able to put her back together until we get new bearings. Until we find something else wrong. That's the other thing I'm wondering. How smoked is that front end? Because you know the U-joints in the axle shafts and the bearings in the differential and the bearings at the ends of the axle tube and all that is just as freaking bad. So if anybody's got like a, a disc brake factory 77 front end, now we're talking. Okay, keep plugging away. Okay, we're finally done with the front end here. Now we can go to the back and do some brake work back there and some shocks. And we're ready to maybe put some wheels on and go for an RIDE. I must not have said it loud enough. Didn't wake him up. You're finally using that bed I got you. Good work. You been keeping an eye on me doing this job the whole time? Make sure I did it right? <laughs> Don't bother me when I'm sleeping. Oh, you're gonna come over and check her out? How's it look? Yeah. Good enough for the girls we go with. Yep. Go boy. Where's the bumper duffers? Okay. Forward ho. Let's knock out the rear brake. What kind of surprises are we gonna find here? Why are we doing these again? These don't look half bad. Other than the shoe is kind of delaminating. We got the parts. I guess we'll stick them in. I 
at this park brake cable, why would we hook that back up? Oh, we still gotta bend the tangers. I well, thought I would get it out of there easier. What is the correct way to get these singos out of there? I never have good luck pinching those things together. Somebody's screaming because I just cut that park brake cable. Guess what? First time ever, we got new ones. Since this thing is a manual, and maybe we'll park on a hill someday, we are gonna put new park brake cables on it. We're not that big of a hack. If you really wanna play a mean joke on somebody that's got an old car, that's been put back on the road, and hasn't had everything done to it, go push the park brake or pull it, whatever you gotta do. Guaranteed these cables will seize and they won't be able to leave wherever the car's parked. Every time. Never fails. Just gonna throw a fresh coat of paint on the drum. Brakes are done over here. Oh, well, I guess we gotta crawl underneath and either hook that up or zip tie it out of the way. Cut the old one off. Park brake cables. Let's put a shock on. Oh, that bushing is toasty, toasty. I want you to do something. Not doing that again. I burned. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Toasty. You guessed it. Shock doesn't fit see there's hardly any thread sticking out which I thought well yeah because it's up in the air but really the jack or whatever the weight is on the rear end so if I were to get that thing started and suck it up it could never go down and I think part of it well part of it all of it is because this silly lift block that's in there and this thing's got kind of a arse up stance stink bug if you will so I want to bring that down kind of levelish we're gonna have to do something back here anyway. So we're just gonna leave the shocks out of it for now. Let's be honest, short wheelbase, big tires. Shocks really aren't doing much, but those ones were original and they were wasted. So we'll throw that back in the box. That's not Rock Auto or KYB or anybody's fault. It's because these cowboys put this lift kit in and I didn't take that into account. We're gonna pull the shock back out of there and we'll have to play around with that lift block and determine where we need to be, no block, half that block. I don't know, it looks like about a three or four inch block there. So maybe a two inch block we could get away with. Yeah, we might have to get some longer shocks too, who knows. It's funny those other shocks actually worked because I mean, those things have been in there for a long time. They looked pretty original. We're pretty much done over here though. I'll pull that back out, decide to hate my life, go on to the other side. I don't paint nothing. See, look at how good I am at it. Got all them flow checks on the floor. Did get the park brake cables hooked up. Had a really weird thing with that. The one on the passenger side seemed to be way too short. The inside part was the right length, but the sleeve was the wrong length. Well, here there was like a hose clamp on each end and some sheathing, and you just slid it to length. That's what happens when you buy the cheapest one. Seems like it'll work though. Guess we'll find out. I'm gonna pick up my mess and have a sandwich. I think we're gonna call her night. Let that paint dry. And then tomorrow maybe go for an RIDE. Hopefully, I guess we haven't tried that carbonator yet, so I guess we'll see if that works. Who knows? Oh, we're missing two hubcaps. Dang it. Based on the maintenance we've seen on this thing thus far, or lack thereof, we're gonna go underneath with our five gallon Luby Dube jug here and pump and top off the rear diff, the transfer case the transfusion, and the front diff. And check for anything else. You know what, while we're at it, we're gonna take grease gun under there and we'll hit the U-joints and the sliders on the drive shaft, and the tie rod ends, and 
the steering knuckles and kingpins and whatever else that needs uh, grease in. And I'm betting there's probably like a dozen Zerks under there, and I'm betting nine of them won't take grease because they never had grease on them before. But we're going to find out. Tell you what, that thing is a lot handier than those silly little squeeze bottles. And I thought I'd never go through five gallons of 80-90, but this is like the third barrel of that stuff. So that'd be like 964 of them little <laughs> squeezy things that you make a mess and you spill all over and you can't get them where you need them. But yeah, the thing's way good. OTC pump and then wherever you get 80-90 at. This one come from the Napa. She's fresh. Just swap the pump over. You can see where I made a mess because that's what I do. I make messes anytime there's fluids involved. Let's uh, check some fluids. Starting at the back side here. Let's, oh my gosh, do I have a big enough Swedish nut lathe here? Oh yeah. Jack stands in the wrong spot. At least it ain't tight. Pinion seal looks like she's weeping a bit, so wouldn't surprise me if this was low. You gotta watch out, some of these early nine inches, this is the first year of the Ford nine inch in a Bronco, cause first year the Bronco. I think it's also the narrowest nine inch, other than maybe like a 57 Ford car, which is the first year of the nine inch in cars. You gotta watch out, some of these don't have rear fill plugs, and if you drop the center section on like this Ford Bronco in a early Ford pickup that doesn't have a rear fill plug, you don't have a fill plug. Sometimes you get lucky and you drop a later Ford pickup one in an early Ford Bronco and you get two fill plugs. Sometimes you can look in there and see, oh yeah, she's right about there. Good to go. I'm not going to top it off anymore because like I said, the pinion leaks. But a zip tie, if you take and bend a 90 in it, you can put that in there. It works as a dipstick jimmy. But we are good. You can use your finger too. See? Ugh. That's some icky stuff. But it's oil nonetheless. So we're good to go on the nine inch, which is good. Cause like I said, these are kind of a hard nine inch to find. They only put them in these early Broncos. So 66 to 77, what's that? 12 years worth. And they're nice hot rod rear ends. Cause I got the five on five and a half bolt pattern. So they're the same as the front end on an early Ford cars up till 48. Your worthless knowledge of the day. Okay, onto the transfer case. Well, wait, I'm gonna grab the grease gun and let that drive shaft. Here you can see our cute little drive shaft. There's a grease circ right there, which is for these splines, which are not in the worst shape, but they're not in the best shape. There should be a grease circ. Oh, there it is right there in this knuckle. Let's try to get her to the most accessible spot. Oh my gosh, it took grease off. Or it squeezed out around it. Dang it. Well, we tried. How about this zerk? I call them zerks. A lot of people call them zerts with a T. I say with a K, I don't know. Google it, what's the difference? Is there such a thing or people making names up? What do you call them other than grease zerks? Grease nipples? That's a pretty good one too. I don't think this one's been greased in a while. And then we got this, I don't know what they call them, joint up here. Card, Cardan, Kardashian, Card, Cardinal, something. These are a real treat. I think you're supposed to have a little pointy end to get way inside there to get the ones in the middle, but of course I didn't bring that down here. Yeah, not one to take grease. Is there one on this front joint? Should be, right? Guess not. And there's like a ball that pivots in the middle here. You're supposed to grease that. You need this pointy little needle to get in there. Oh, there is a Zerk right there, but there's absolutely no way you'd ever get on it. Short of taking the drive shaft out. Okay, onto our transfer case. This thing's painted blue like somebody's had her out before. She's a Model 20 Dana, it looks like. I think that's a 20. There's a drain plug right here. Fill plug right here, so let's pop that out. Judging by how oily it is, I'm sure it hasn't leaked at all. You want your rig sitting level when you're doing this. So we're probably doing that wrong because it looks like the back ends up a little bit higher. Can't feel any oil. Not on the fingertip. Let's put a couple of pumps in there. Look at how much easier this is than silly bottles. It's even easier if you got a second person to run the pump while you lay under here and watch for oil running out. She's full. And we continue 
spilling because that's what we do. All right, now we can go on to the transfusion. We got our front drive shaft here, same deal. Card, carden joint, I don't know. Slip yoke and a grease circ on the front U joint. There's our drain plug on the transmission. And there's our fill plug. Let's pop it out and see what we got. It's probably like a 9 16 wrench, but the old Swedish nut lathe. So convenient for taking these pipe plugs out. Except sometimes it really isn't. There's grease on the end of the plug, so I'm guessing she's right up there. Yep. Transmission's all painted blue too, like somebody worked on that once. So up here, looks like our kingpins, there and there, oh, I don't know, I guess I'd call it a kingpin. Doesn't have any way to grease it. Our knuckle on our front axle shaft doesn't have a grease circ. And there's a grease circ on each end of the tie rod here. One of them's a new one we just put on and then our drag link's got a couple. So pretty easy. And then we'll pull this plug out on the front diff here, which is an Allen because somebody put that 90 degree thing on it. So I was greasing that front drive shaft. There's an awful lot of play. Remember how I was talking earlier? How that front end, if the uh, hubs are any indication what the rest of it's like? Yeah, that front bearing is either super loose or super gone. She's trashed. So I see a front diff rebuild in our future. Yay! Yay! Let's see if it's got any oil in it. Oh man, is that a brass plug? Dang, that's a good one. Usually they're steel. Oh man, it's got oil on it. Ooh. Oh, there's uh, some water in there. You can see that just on my fingertips. Definitely water in there. Probably because it didn't have a breather tube for 100 years until we redid the brake lines and put one on there. Okay. We're just uh, gonna run it because like I said, it's got something in it and we know it's pretty much smoked anyway. Awesome. Let's just wrap it up for maintenance. We know we need a pinion seal. We know we need to go through the front diff and we know that the drive shafts should come apart and get greased and probably rebuilt with some new splines and the slip yokes. Might as well put U-joints in it where we're at. Might as well just put two new drive shafts in it. Just. Bust out the piggy bank, but it'll run for what we're gonna do for now. Let's put a little ground strap down here, tying the chassis to the engine. We already had one going from the engine to the body, and of course our main ground goes from the battery to the engine. And I realized we've never had an air cleaner on this thing, and it didn't come with one. So I went and dug through my stash, because I like original air cleaners. Found this one off a of 55 Ford, but it doesn't have clearance to go around the choke mechanism, doodad, and the bracketry. So I had this little chrome one on my shelf for eternity because somebody gave it to me and I hate little chrome air cleaners. Put that on the list of things I despise. Anyway, when you get it on there, I'm like, man, that sits real high. Sure enough, hits the hood. And part of that's because you gotta have that little adapter on there. Oh well. But even without that adapter, it's not going to clear the hood. So I looked on the interwebs and it looks like there's a rectangular tube that comes over here and then it drops down into an air cleaner. And that's what we need. So if you got one of those, hit us up, mortsgearpair at gmail.com. Otherwise, we're going to have to make something and drop it down, maybe bolt it to that valve cover, see what we can come up with. I couldn't even find one on Flea Bay. All I could find was ones for like Comets and Mustangs and... Like I said, those probably are going to sit up too high or get into that choke stuff. So we'll have to figure something out there. Hopefully we don't suck in too much dust. Not good. Also, this is a Baldwin filter. It's not a Fram filter. It's red, not orange. You know me. I don't really care for the Frams. And so don't jump me about running a Fram filter because it is clearly a Baldwin not Steven or Michael or whatever the other Baldwin brother is. Billy? Is that the other Baldwin brother? Billy Baldwin. Now what are we gonna do? 
I guess not have an air cleaner. Right, Duff? Right. We should put some wheels on this thing, eh? No, not a a a a a. Yeah, that's what I said. A a a. Look at our parts pile dwindling down. Still got that turn signal assembly. These gaskets I couldn't put in the taillights because the new stainless screws that I scrounged up are not long enough to grab enough threads. So I need some longer taillight screws. We also need some longer shocks, and we didn't really use the brake stuff. So really, should we rip into that column duff? Get that over with? Fish those through there? Let's do that. It's raining out, and you can see our wipers are going to scratch up our windshield, which is already scratched up and cracked and needs a seal. Good news is it's just flat safety glass, so it should be relatively affordable compared to the rest of the stuff on this thing. Right? Well, you just want me to open the door so you can climb in. Fine. Check it out. Let's pull that steering column apart for the 943rd time, hey? You want me to grab you the puller? All right, I'll get you the tools. You do it. What a bugger that is, but you know what? Always makes my day when the man comes by. You know, if he put a muffler on that thing, I would never even know. We're back in slippers, no mask, rocking the pajamas. We got the gloves on. Oh yeah, he's just bogging through them puddles today. I wonder how many miles that thing has on it. John Deere should send out an award. Talk about a test of patience this thing is here. I don't even want to know how many hours I got into this steering column. And if these blinkers don't work when we're done, I'm done with it. Okay, so we got our blinker assembly, turn signal assembly, whatever you want to call it in there. And you can see when you move your arm, it moves that guy. So self-canceling blinkers, whenever those come out, they had them in 66. So you turn your blinker to the right, so when you come back left, your steering wheel will hit this guy bumps it off. When you hit your left blinker, your steering, you turn left, it can trip past this, and then as you go back right, it hits it and trips it back that way. This little guy is what does that. However, these aftermarket steering wheels, adapters, this one anyway, it should have a, a lobe on there to hit that. So we're not going to have self-canceling blinkers. We're going to be like the big rig truckers and just have to turn them off herself. And then these two posts, one's power and one sends a signal to the horn when you hit the horn and they ride on those little guys there hopefully that stuff's in good enough shape so when we hook up the battery it don't arc out well, i guess worst case scenario would just turn the horn on well provided it wasn't arced out to this aluminum case which was goes down the steering shaft which ties to the chassis and that would not be good let's stick this son of a biscuit back together and then we'll go underneath and we'll take our old connector, and I got this sweet tool I'll show you for how to get those old pins out. And we got to repin it onto this new one. What I learned on this is usually I fish those wires through with a wire. It's actually a big enough casing on there that when you put the tape on it, it's not big enough. But you can actually fish the wires through without taping them together and putting them on a piece of wire. So Ford got that right. Pretty easy to push down through there. All right. Let's put this back together. So here's our connectors that we need to sell. First thing I did was took a picture so that I know if I screw something up, I can go back and reference that because you got to put all the wires in the same spots. I'm sure there's some type of diagram on the interwebs. The larger wires are for the horn and these smaller ones are all for the blinker setup, turn signals, if you will. So what I got, 
is this neat little pushy tool that's made in Taiwan that I've never used. But what you're supposed to be able to do is just push in there around that pin and then it should slide right out. So we'll see how that goes. You get like three of these things of different assortments from Amazonia for like seven dollars so you know they're gonna be good. Same deal as the stoplight switch. There's just a little metal tanger in there that we're trying to push flat and then when we push that flat the pin should come out. I'm gonna struggle through doing this and then we'll push the new ones in place. This is not gonna go well especially considering once I get them loose I have to get one loose. I have to lay on my head and do the rest underneath there down on the floor. Can't wait. I think the OD is too big on this. I think the ID is too small. Too big, I mean. It's not been in them tabs. I can see why the last people spliced them. You know, I said there's three tools that come with that kit. And this little pointy one, I just took that and pressed on where that tang was. Works pretty good. I think this tool is actually designed for like that stoplight switch. You reach in there and hit that tang. But that round one, like these are cheap tools, let's be honest. But the diameter is too big. It needs to have a smaller diameter so it bends that pin better. But this worked pretty dang good. So now I just need to poke all the new wires through in the right spots. Wish me luck. Ugh. I mixed two of them up. We gotta go check out my phone, but man, he's got a big old load of groceries in there. He's not gonna have to go back for a while. Is that a bag of cat food? I'll imagine that. More man's a cat guy. What do you think about that, Duff? Yeah, cat guys are strange. I mean, Dwayne, if you're watching, the guy who's always grumbly about me, you, you probably have cats, you're, you're totally fine. All right, I'm gonna check out my phone, try to figure out where that last blue and white wire went because they slid out and I lost track. I think we got her. Well, let's hook up a battery. Watch for spark. No spark. No smoke. Hmm. Well. Battery's not dead. Ho, ho, ho. What do you think about that, Duff? You're so excited. You came to check it out. Son of a biscuit. I think this is the first time we've ever had blinkers on anything in my entire life. How about that? No way they both work. And the indicators in the dash. Ho, ho. Yeah. High five. All the way, there you go. That a boy. Yes! Oh, we're so close. It's raining out though, we need wipers. That one's going too. Woo! I'd have a celebratory sandwich, but it's pretty early on Saturday morning, so. Yeah, we're gonna go for a ride. Give me a minute. I'm just enjoying it. What about if we touch this, is the horn? I don't know if the horn's even hooked up. Did we hook up the horn under the hood? Oh, the wire's hooked up, I don't know. We don't need a horn anyway, but maybe if we were to Oh yeah, she arcs, so I don't know if that's good or not. Okay, I'm gonna pick my stuff up. You make yourself comfortable. I'll put some wheels on and such. And then we'll go for a ride. Yeah, yeah. You gonna drive this time? Probably not such a good idea. I don't think you got your license yet. Got her wheels stuck on. While I was down there, I noticed a new puddle on the floor in the area of the transfer case. Interesting. It was already low, so that'll probably tell us where it's leaking, huh, Duff? You wanna go sniff her out? Yeah, okay, I'll go do it. I know you don't like the smell of 8090. Nobody does. Well, that was pretty easy. Looks like the front output shaft is leaking. It's not coming out around the seal, though. It's running out the center of the nut on the shaft. That's weird. Usually, usually it should leak right here around the seal. But this looks like it's running out past the nut. Hmm, interesting, to say the least. Be a good time to put that seal in there though anyway. The spines are pretty tight on this front drive shaft though. That's good. Leak, not so good. Eventually it'll quit leaking once it gets low enough. That's how you know when it's empty. Let's get this thing on the ground and see if Chin's new carburetor is top notch. I'm sure it is. Well, fill up the bowl with some hot sauce. Let's see if she takes off. You got much faith? Make sure it's out of gear this time. This one was the one that run over the camera back in the day. Well, is it in gear? I don't think so. Just kidding. 
It's in gear. I did look underneath. I need to adjust the linkages a little bit. That hole where the like an eighth inch drill bit goes through. Not everything's quite lined up. So also there's a bushing underneath there we need to address. Oop, popped right off. Until it didn't. Choke. Oh boy, that cable's stiff. What's it doing? You got any ideas? Why did it go the one time? How did we get the horn to work? Weird. I don't know, give her some more hot sauce. And there's gas running everywhere. Oh, somebody never tightened that line up. Yeah, that would help. Maybe it's not getting enough fuel pressure up there because the line's loose. Guess I've seen stranger things. Where's our fuel leak? Looks like it's just kind of coming everywhere. I'm guessing that nut should be tightened down to hold. Looks like it's just coming out the top. What is going on there? You got a, I don't know, a screw with a jam nut to hold that? Let's tighten that jam nut up. Silly YF1 carburetor by Carter for Motorcraft. Take that off my bill, chin. Just my it. Spitting out everywhere. I'm guessing the float's stuck. Let's turn the idle up a skosh. Too much fuel. drive it with the choke on until we can tear into that carburetor more. Awesome. Some circuit must be plugged. That's why we gotta block off the air. Wait, if we're blocking off the air so it's getting less air. Yeah, because it's not getting enough fuel. So we're turning the choke on to match how much fuel it's getting. So yeah, something's plugged up. Chin showed up just in time and we determined that the accelerator pump it's got this check ball. That was the check ball that he forgot. 
the first time, but we put it in there anyway. And all that check ball does is, so when fuel's in that cavity, it can't run back down, so you gotta pump it several times to get it back up there. So we got that in there, we got that figured out, but we were pumping it, and we'd get fluid up to here. And it would blow back. It would, like, if you lifted your finger off, it would be so much pressure that it would, took it off and shoot everywhere. And it's capped on the top side, right there. So it's gotta come out that little orifice right there. So we got the old torch tip cleaner out and chased her out. Now watch this, kapow, she's a squirter. Now it's gonna run way more gooder. Oh yeah, for sure. What now else? We're, now we're gonna be bucking. What else did you forget to clean out while we're in here? We'll see if we oh, wow. allow Chin to come back as a guest carburetor rebuilder after this. You're just gonna do it behind the scenes anyway. Blow on it. Blow on it real good. Duff, it's it's the time of year where all the bones that he buried in the snow piles are melting and becoming accessible again. So now he feels the need to go. That's mud, right? Not poop? Yeah, that's just mud. So now he goes and buries them with his nose in the mud. You're gonna get another bath this week, it looks like. Gosh dang, dog. Well, is it gonna work? Maybe a better, I guess. We'll see. It squirts. 50 50 90 rule. Either it is or it isn't. 90% chance it isn't. Your battery came off, my boy. Here, let me put that on there for you. Did you tighten the fuel lines? I didn't. Is it spitting everywhere? No, but I don't want it to be. Okay. Port was probably all that was plugged the first time too. <laughs> You're a freaking carburetor genius. Oh. oh, are you so excited, Duff? Will it start again though? <laughs> what a deal. Almost starts as good as the 64 Impala wagon. One day we'll get the beater roller out and we'll make that door panel. And find an armrest and weld that back together so we can mount it. Until then, we're just gonna drive it. Sure looks terrible without those hubcaps though. Chin's over here trying to put on wiper blades because it's raining out, got my side done. And then I realized, how do we turn these things on? Where's the switch at? Played with them all, look up here. See that switch? See that hose? They're vacuum and they're not hooked up. Well, there's a nail here, so we can run it by hand. But you don't have any thumbs, so you can't run your side because they're not tied together. So we're just gonna put some rain -X on it. We're gonna make a little B double E double R U N with the old horse here. We got some lattes, some friendlies, some Coors casseroles, ham and cheeses. Ooh, point special, Wisconsin's. More ham and cheese casseroles. Our, uh, Rhombus guys, iconic blondes, bush apples, blue ribbons. We got all kinds of good stuff back here. Some natties, some Rainier, some Linies, summer shandies. I haven't tried one of these yet. Blue Moon, light sky citrus wheat, and they're in the skinny can, so you can't drink those in public or people will harass you. We gotta get these to a place and do a thing. So we're gonna see if we can't get them there with Das Bronco. Duff! Go for a ride? Is it even gonna start? Of course it is. Do we not have the clutch hooked up? Well, better check that. Okay, the rod came unhooked underneath there. I suppose when we unhooked it underneath the dash, it came unhooked underneath the uh, Bronco here.
we got a clutch again. Doesn't feel like a good clutch, but it's a clutch. I gotta go find Duff, he ran off on me. goods back there. Not not the right goods to be hauling without any rear shot. Oops. Alright, let's go round up that dope dog. Okay, we got about 14 cases of beer. The roads are wet. We got no wipers. Let's hit it. 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. We did not get the steering wheel straight. Nor did we roll down the top. And there's a draft through the floor going up my ankle. But we're really doing it, Harry. We're really doing it though, aren't we, buddy? Well, we got a shifter. Maybe. Need some adjustment. We got a much better carburetor. We got blinkers. We got lights. We got a steering knuckle. We got all kinds of stuff. We got a huge headwind today, so we get to deal with that both for noise and lack of power. That wing window really whistles when you try to close it, so we'll just leave it open. I forgot this thing's got a speedo.
dust, it's cock. It just acts cool. All this beer in here. Oh my God, side mirrors. Put that on the list, side mirrors. Comment down below what your local law enforcement drives for police utility vehicles. Oh hey, it's the prom. Should we go ask if they, uh, anybody, oh my gosh, that kid needs to have his sh shoes and bite his pants down to have a party. They're like six inches up there. What do your local law enforcement drive? Ours drive Dodge Durango's because we're out in Podunk and I guess they think they need SUVs. Now when we're, Old Napa Todd's at. He used to be a police officer. They got Ford F 150s or Dodge Ram half tons, I think. You guys got anything cool to, like, what do they even have anymore? They don't make Carl Vick since what, 2011? RIP. I don't even know what they make anymore. Chargers? Chargers? Are they cop cars still? Make the Caprice? Probably not. This blue hair needs to get out of the way. We're on the highway. This Bronco just wants to get out and gallop. Stretch its legs. Giddy on up now. One mile to go. I can see our destination from here. Duck and smell it through the windows. One last hill. Made it, Duff. Well, there you have it. We got our 1966 Ford Bronco back on the road. We got a shifter working. We got lights working, blinkers working. We got seats that are securely mounted, kind of. We got new wheel bearings and seals. We found a plethora of the other issues. We got the fuel tank strapped in. We just, we did all kinds of stuff this week. We got our fluids filled up, topped off. Grease, zerks, zerked, greased tie rod end replaced, new tail lights. We did all kinds of fun stuff this week. So I appreciate you watching. Check out the other videos on the Bronco. Check out the other videos we got. Think about getting yourself some Mortski merch down below. Maybe even think about joining the Duff Approved Club. A bunch of behind the scenes stuff we got going on for you good folks that have already joined that. Check out our other videos. But most of all, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Thanks for watching everybody. I think this Bronco is going to be a lot of fun. Anybody know anything about Toyota Stouts? They're pretty ugly. That's what I know. And you don't see many of them.